Welcome back to Blender Frenzy's quarantine series. I am Justin and I am in a giddy, giddy mood right now. And that is because uh, I watched the live stream of Blender Guru tonight and I actually answered some questions. Sorry, what I mean is I asked some questions and he answered two of my questions or responded to two of my comments. Now, granted, he set it up to where you have to pay to have your comment highlighted, but it wasn't that much and i i fully support his uh all all the, that he does and i'm so thankful so it was no big deal for me to to spend that money and um <clears throat> but it was it was awesome because i actually lived in korea when when andrew price was in korea um i was there teaching english as a second language to grade school students and i was actually living there for i lived there for 3 years and uh, he was there at the same time. This is way back in, uh, I was there from 2011 to 2014. So I think he uh, married a Korean. So that's why he was over there. And that's when he was actually building his course, uh, the uh, architecture course, the Architecture Academy. I think that's w when he was doing that. But uh, funny thing is, too, I sent him a message on Facebook saying, hey, we should go get a drink sometime. You know, we're both in Korea. Yay. But that was when I was first learning Blender. So I had just kind of run across blender i was kind of looking at some tutorials i'm like oh this is kind of awesome you know and he did a great job explaining things and i watched some of the, he did he did one actually with the cherry blossoms in korea they're huge over there in korea i mean there's like two days where the cherry blossom trees just blossom into these beautiful you know pink white looking flowers and it does it lasts like a day or two that's when everybody goes out and you know they take pictures and uh Go, people go to parks a lot of a lot of people are you know outside during that time and he, he did a tutorial making how to make the uh, little cherry blossoms i didn't follow that one but but anyway i asked him about the podcast if he was going to bring the podcast back and uh he wants to but um he's trying to think of a name for it and i was like no nah, just go for it you know just name it later just start it because <laughs> i i enjoyed all of his uh ramblings of things actually it was it was really relaxing to listen to but just having him uh be able to answer a question that i had or a couple comments yeah that was that's pretty cool so <laughs> i'm a little giddy and yes i am a bit of a fangirl i'm not ashamed of that <laughs> I think I think Andrew Price is awesome. I think uh, he, well, he got me started in Blender. Now, there are other people, of course, along the way that have helped, but um, he's the main guy that got me started. So, yeah, uh, I'm a big fan. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> we are going on to baking our toilet paper. That sounds kind of weird. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, let's go small here. Yes, uh, this is what we have. We've gone over lighting and shadows in the past couple of uh, tutorials we've talked about normal maps making our uh, surface look a little bit bumpy here so this is kind of what we have so far so it's not looking too shabby let's go over to our shading tab here's our node setup we've got our texture so if we just plug that texture in to see that that's just this flat texture so this is without any shaders or lighting information and then we've got our normal map which is what gives that that appearance of a bumpy texture, a uh, bumpy surface, and then I'm feeding both of those through a diffuse shader, and so your diffuse shader is your standard non-glossy surface, and that uh, tells the light what to do when it bounces off the object. So that's why you see what we see here, and of course it's being put into this material output node, which is why we can see it here being output in the 3D view. So that's what we have so far. And in this video, what I want to do is take all of these nodes here and just compile them all together and bake them into one single texture that will look something like this. So if I just take this texture and plug it right in there, you can see we have the same exact effect. But uh, you can see it's a lot more smooth now because uh, here, if I plug this one back in, you can see if I move we have these little artifacts, these this uh, light jitter here. That's because EV, we're using the EV renderer right now, and it's calculating the, the light as we move uh, our viewport. But here, if we plug in the just texture, it's not using any sort of shader information or normal map information. It's all baked in here, and you can see it plays a lot more smooth. In fact, we can even turn off our light and we, it looks and appears like we still have that light because that's all baked onto the image, which if we go here and choose our TP bake 03, which we haven't made yet, i am just made this here for the demonstration to show you the end result. Um, and that's what it will look like. 
But first, I'm just going to go ahead and delete this texture and plug this back into our material output for now. Uh, turn our light back on because we will need that. So we've been working in Eevee. We're going to have to switch to cycles uh, in order to bake because Eevee doesn't actually have the option to bake as of 2.82. So, but before I do that, what I want to do is come over here to the material preview mode and then in the drop down, choose scene lights and scene world. Now I'm just doing this to, so that this matches our rendered view. So both of these are the exact same right now. And they're both using the Eevee renderer. So when I switch to the rendered mode and then change this to cycles, this is just a nice uh, easy way to switch back and forth between cycles and Eevee instead of always coming to this tab and then choosing from the dropdown. But before I bake, I want to uh, adjust this light here just a little bit more. I'm gonna choose light and then down in our properties tab, let's go to a size of six inches here. Okay, and then I'm going to select our object again and duplicate this, Shift D. And then I'm going to choose my placeholder image, which is currently blank. Uh, you can see that over here. And this is my workflow. This is how I like to do it. You can create a new image here. If you, if you don't have a placeholder image, just click New Image and type in your settings. And make sure it's selected. And what that's going to do is when we bake, so let's come over to our Render tab here, and then down, all the way down here to Bake. So now if I click Bake here, it's going to take anything that's going into the Material Output node, and it's going to paint it or bake it onto this node here, whichever one we have selected. So make sure our placeholder is selected, our object is selected, and I'm going to go ahead and choose Bake. And you can see down here, we got Texture Bake going on, and it's about 10%, so it's not too bad. Um, of course, I am recording, so it's probably going to be a little bit choppy as, uh, as it does it, but um, I'm going to go ahead and wait for it to go all the way up, and we'll see when it's done. Okay, so we are done baking and here is our result. And this is very similar to what uh, I showed you in the beginning. Um, and so let's go ahead and plug this in to the surface here. And ta-da! We now have all of our node information baked into a single texture. And again, we can turn that light off because we don't actually even need it. And we can come out here. Um, I can even go into solid shading mode and you can see uh, that texture is baked on there with all of the lighting, shadows, bumpiness, and everything. But you probably have noticed uh, some things we might not want. So I'm going to go back to material mode here. You can see these lines going down our, outside of our toilet paper roll. Now we didn't see this in Eevee before we baked. But now after we baked, we see it. And that's because Cycles, for some reason, has trouble with the smooth shaded. You can see... Uh, we have our cylinder smooth shaded, but um, if we turn on our wireframe here, let's turn on overlays. Um, you can see it's drawing those lines on uh, where those edges are on our model. It's having trouble with this one face uh, where it's not smooth and also on the other side. Yeah, so you have that line coming down here. And I don't know why it doesn't recognize the smooth shading like it should. But that's one of our problems that we're going to have to fix. So if we go back over to the shading tab, um, let's zoom in here. You can see that those lines have been baked on there. And we want to get rid of those. So uh, let's hook this back up to our nodes, to the material output, and let's turn our node light again. You can see, well, there's no line right here. Well, again, remember, that's because we are in material preview mode, which uses Eevee as the render engine. If I switch over to rendered mode, you can see as Cycles goes through its samples, we get those lines. Now one way to get rid of those is to come to our light and then to the properties and adjust our size. I'm going to adjust it to 1 and you can see that that's now a lot more smooth. But if I increase the size, if you remember, if you increase the size of the light, which, by the way, is called in Eevee something different. So if I go to Eevee and I go back to here, it's actually called the radius. So the radius in Eevee is the same as the size in cycles. 
So anyway, um, and if I keep increasing this, you see um, that that gets a lot more smooth. However, uh, it also softens our shadows. So if I bring this down instead to 0 0.01, you can see we get harsh shadows in this really harsh line. Now, I don't recommend changing the size here, especially if you are actually going for a harsh shadow kind of thing. So let's say this is the lighting setting I want to keep. I want to make sure that the shadow has exactly this fall off. So uh, instead of changing the light, let's select our object again and go to the modifiers tab. And we're just going to add a little bit more geometry. So I'm going to go up to add modifier and then subdivision surface. And you can see it already is taking effect. I'm just going to bump that up to two in the viewport. And you can see that it successfully has gotten rid of those lines. And the reason is uh, if we come over to our overlays and to wireframe again, you see that this is adding a lot more geometry. Um, now, normally I would click simple to keep the shape, but that actually has the opposite effect of what I want here. Cause now you can see it's definitely kept more of that cylinder shape and given us more lines that we don't want. So I'm going to leave it at Catmull Clark. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure and that gives us this smooth shading. Now, it's applying this subdivision surface after our edge surface, which is good, that's what we want. We wanna keep our sharp edges that we defined, and actually we can just uncheck edge angle because we're not using that, we've defined our own sharp edges, and then it applies the modifier of the subdivision. And if I disable this, you can see what's happening. So this is our original geometry, and this is just adding more to it. And by doing that, it will smooth out that shading. And the reason I'm using a modifier instead of actually adding geometry is so that I can get rid of this after we bake, because we only need the subdivision service for the bake. And once it has that on there, then we can go back to our low resolution and paste our bake onto that. Okay, so let's disable our overlays again. I'm gonna go into a couple more things before we actually bake the second time. So let's go back to our render tab. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the sampling. Now. Many of you probably already know what sampling is, but for those who don't, Cycles is a path tracer, so what that means is it traces the paths of light that bounce off of the object and give it a real-world look because it simulates how light bounces off of objects in the real world. So if I go ahead and bring the viewport paths down to one and then adjust my view a little bit so it updates, you can see that after it reaches one, then it stops. And you can see this grainy, really noisy looking material here. And it's kind of hard to make out our shape. And so what's, what it's doing, if you imagine each one of these little tiny dots as a ray of light bouncing off the object. So the more rays that you have, and you can see it's counting up over here, the better and more clear and crisp the object becomes. So something like this in the viewport 20 is good, or I'm just gonna set it back up to 32, which is, the default there and it will just keep calculating up until we hit 32 and then it will stop rendering done if you put zero here in the viewport then it will continue to add samples into infinity until you make some sort of update or change anything so i'm going to leave that at 32 and then our render when we bake it out it's going to be at 128 which is going to be a lot more clear and crisp Okay, so let's go down to bake again. And the second thing I'm gonna do is just uncheck some of these. I know our object isn't glossy, so I'm gonna uncheck that. It, there's no transmission of light going through the object, so I'm gonna uncheck that. And same thing, there's no subsurface uh, material like skin where you can see light through the skin. I'm gonna uncheck that. I'm gonna also uncheck emit because our toilet paper is not emitting light. Uh, I'm just gonna keep diffuse and ambient occlusion. Okay, so again, everything from the material output is going to be baked onto whatever we have selected. So I'm gonna select this one. And of course, we gotta make sure our object is selected. And I'm gonna just reload this uh, placeholder. So now we're at a black texture here and I think we're ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click bake. Okay, so let's see what we have now. Um, let's zoom in here. Looks like we have gotten rid of those nasty lines, which is great. And then we can come over to material preview mode here and plug this in. And we don't have to, we can 
stay in cycles too. And you can see that since we've already have our texture bake, we can turn off our light and uh, it doesn't update those path traces. Well, it does, but it doesn't really do anything because it's not calculating any light because I just turned my light off. <laughs> so, uh, and there's no shader here too. Just It's just this plain texture. And let's go back into our layout workspace here and you can see, ta-da! What's great about baking is you can use the physically based renderer of cycles to make objects look like the real thing, but then switch back to Eevee and use the speed of rendering an Eevee. Uh, say you want to do like a fly through of a room or something like that. And uh, every frame, if you use cycles, is going to calculate that path tracing. And so it'll take a lot longer if you have to do that for every single frame. If you do that one time, and bake everything into it one time, maybe up the samples to a thousand samples. So you get really crisp and clear textures on your objects. And then when you do the fly through, you switch back over to Eevee and boom, it's a uh, lightning speed. It doesn't have to calculate all those samples. So one thing to keep in mind about this though, is that it doesn't work with moving objects. So since you're baking the lighting information onto the object itself, if the object moves, then the shadows are going to move with it like this. If I uh, turn on that and we're going to turn off our wireframe uh, and you can see if we zoom out. Um, oh, let's turn our light back on. So our light is here. And if I take my object and I just rotate my object around. So if I turn it around here, our light is here, but our shadows <laughs> are on the same side as our light, which of course breaks the illusion of the real world. And if this toilet paper was actually sitting on top of a surface and we moved it over here like this, then you over here you would see the black shadow area of the toilet paper. So uh, it has its limitations, but it's really awesome to use for, again, camera animation where you're doing a fly through and something, or if you're making a game environment where you got stuff in the background that isn't going to move, then uh, that could help with the real-time um, game engine. So let's go ahead and save this because right now we are operating under our placeholder image, which we haven't actually saved. So I'm gonna go save image uh, as a copy. I'm just gonna call it shadow bake 02. Okay, and save it as a JPEG, 75% is fine, and save. So now let's go ahead and open it up here. It's gonna be the same thing, except for now we're not using our placeholder image. We're using our bake two, shadow bake two, which is the exact same thing. But now I can reload my placeholder for the next bake if I wanted to. And I still have our TP shadow bake 02. But speaking of fly throughs, the next video, I will show you how to make a little camera animation that just goes around our object like this.